Now we come to the final um, presentation um, uh, of uh, our, our conference. Um, yes, this was originally supposed to be a panel, um, but uh, because of the number of applications, um, we unfortunately didn't have a space for the panel. But uh, we're great to be able to end the conference uh, with this presentation. So the presenters are Jim Sammons and Tim Lynn Babetsky, uh, Stephen Lom uh, Lomazow, uh, James Hyman and, and Ben Lee again. Um, just to give you a little bit of information about our, our speakers. So this is really coming from uh, the citizen science area as well. Um, we were very lucky to meet uh, uh, Jim when we were over at the Library of Congress doing a, a workshop a couple of years ago now. Um, so Jim and uh, Tim Lynn are citizen scientists um, who have been very active in the magazines and related to all of the data standards re 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 sorry, related to magazines. We also have uh, Stephen, who ha is the owner and curator of the great American magazine collection. Tim, uh, sorry, sorry, James, uh, who is the owner creator of HiMag, formerly the Hyman Archive, founded in 2011. And I think Ben has also been involved in the presentation. So in the abstract, it really says a lot of money has been spent on um, digitizing of newspapers. Um, but now I think the panel and uh, really plights for um, turning some of that expertise that has been uh, learnt as part of this process to focus on magazines. So Jim and all colleagues, thanks very much for coming over to you. Thank you to all of you for your patience and to the NewsEye conference organizers for inviting us to present our panel, The Case for Magazines. Uh, to make this case for the importance of digitizing magazines as significant repositories of cultural and historical information to be data mined for research, <laughs> Jim and I had shortened up our technical presentation and provided links to the relevant articles that cover our magazine ground truth storage uh, format research. And Jim was only going to briefly cover our work in order to provide the bulk of our time to uh, Stephen and James to really share with us their incredible uh, repositories of magazines uh, for making the case for magazines. The thing that we wanted to do here, and this is the least technical presentation of the conference, um, but as Sally uh, mentioned, what we want to do is make the case that we've got tens and uh, millions and millions of pages of digitized uh, newspapers and what, what we want to do is uh, put a bug in the ear, the collective ear of the news eye and the larger uh, EU-based uh, digital humanities research community uh, to start shifting some of our attention to the digitization and, uh, and uh, corpus creations for magazines. The way to make that uh, case is to look at some of the similarities and differences and the opportunities that we have uh, when we turn some attention to magazines. Both serial publications of newspapers and magazines um, have incredibly long histories uh, in terms of being a unique trove for cultural heritage and human knowledge. They differ in the sense that most newspapers tend to be more frequently uh, published and they're like a spotlight a spotlight on what is often a geographically bounded uh, readership, uh, a local uh, a community, uh, a, a city, a daily newspaper, um, or a national publication. Magazines, however, are uh, tend to be much uh, more laser focused, more like a spotlight on specific areas of human knowledge uh, and and interest. So. You'll have magazines about uh, sheepdog trials and knitting. And in our case, uh, uh, you know, looking at specific brands of microcomputers. That similarity um, is also uh, shared in the sense that while OCR has been uh, increasingly accurate in terms of taming text, uh, what has been, and we've seen so many of 
of examples of this in the presentations over the last day and a half. The real challenge with newspapers and magazines is layout recognition because of the complex document structures that both of these types of, of pu serial publications uh, have. The, the, the point that we want to make and the area that we work in in terms of our own uh, research is that we, we, and most of the examples that we've seen when we've been talking about layout recognition um, at, at uh, the conference has been what we would call within page um, re uh, layout recognition. It's a, a challenge in and of itself just to figure out what's on this page. The interesting thing is, and what we what, what we really think will be a value for both magazines and newspapers is when we start to shift our attention from within page layout recognition to start to look at whole issue uh, document structures and the relationships of document structures uh, throughout uh, from beginning to the end of a particular issue. So that um, when we look at something like a table of content, we know that that is a hint of uh, you know, kind of a, a bunch of hints about what you'll find in the rest of the, the publication. There'll be things like article segmentations continued on such and such a page and whatnot. We know that when we start with a magazine, we, we go from front matter where you're going to have the table of contents, masthead, letters to the editors, columns and things. We're going to eventually get to the feature well, and then in the middle of the magazine. And then towards the end, we get in return to the back matter where we have some more columns and, and advertising index and whatnot. So we want to start to look at pipelines for digitization that, that, that recognize that when we digitize a particular issue of a magazine or a newspaper, that there is this uh, structure beyond the individual page. In our particular case, we're working on the development of a, a ground truth storage format called Magazine GTS. Um, Magazine GPS, GTS um, is built on an ontological stack of Psydoc CRM, uh, FRBROO, which is the, um, the functional requirements for bibliographic research as an extension of the CRM, and PressOO, which is the ontology specific to uh, continuing serial publications. At the individual page level, we, we uh, use Sal, uh, Prima's page GTS or XML standard. And in, in the um, uh, chat, we shared a couple of links. Um, one is uh, a bit.ly to uh, NewsEye magazine's URL. That is a, a kind of supplementary materials that has links to uh, our Daytech 2017 and 2019 posters, our Neo4j graph gist, um, and, uh, and, and the second one that is for the Press OO, I, in order to collapse our tech talk side of this uh, panel, um, I wrote a long form piece on Medium about uh, using Press OO issuing rules for uh, moving up into whole issue uh, uh, complex document structure uh, and how we've used that uh, in the magazine GTS. So uh, I would uh, hope that um, you know folks take advantage of of uh, checking that out because that's really where um, we're able to make uh, the case for magazines and in particular the idea that we we now have the opportunity to move from within page to whole issue digitization. <laughs> One of the reasons that you know we propose this panel is not only to recognize that folks like us as, as citizen scientists exist, um, but that there are citizen historians. Um, and these are folks who have an avocation and a passion um, for uh, collecting magazines and, and documenting our, our cultural heritage. Um, and we have two of what we consider to be the most renowned uh, private uh, magazine collectors uh, available, for, and we're so lucky to have them here today. Uh, Stephen uh, Lamezo uh, is a, a neurologist, medical doctor by day, but certainly uh, a, a tremendous uh, 
expert in the American magazine periodicals. And so, uh, Stephen, uh, please take it away take and, it and tell, tell, tell us about you and your, uh, your collection. Thank you, James. Well, uh, I am, as Jim said, um, a collector. I've been doing this for 50 years. Uh, I've been collecting specifically with the idea of trying to document the American experience and American history as it relates to magazines. So uh, the consummation of all of this it has been a book that just came out called Magazines in the American Experience. And we have a show at the Grolier Club in New York called, by that name, Magazines in the American Experience, which documents and has uh, pic pictures of uh, and, and items from my collection of 50 years, documenting the entire American experience, beginning uh, actually with a British magazine, uh, uh, Edward Cave's uh, Gentleman's Magazine, which is the first time that it was ever used, um, the word magazine was ever used in the context. Uh, the original word magazine comes from uh, the Arabic magazine, uh, which means a storehouse, and of course, uh, if you store bullets in a gun, it's in the magazine, and, and gunpowder on a ship is in the magazine, but uh, Cave was the first one to use magazine in the context of, uh, of a periodical. Uh, and uh, in, in America, uh, the first magazines became, uh, 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 were done by uh, none other than Benjamin Franklin and Andrew Bradford, and uh, I've been collecting these for 50 years. Uh, um, the, the, the exhibition has been well received. We have uh, reviews in uh, New York Times, um, uh, New Yorker magazine, uh, and today is in the Wall Street Journal, um, Smithsonian, many other publications. And we've uh, we, we received widespread uh, praise for what we've done. Uh, the catalog uh, is available uh, through the Grolier Club. Uh, if anybody wants to uh, read it, I'd be happy to supply a digital copy of it for you. And I'll give you my email address, D-R-L-O-M-A-Z-O-W at gmail.com. Also, the exhibition can be seen. An Omeka-based uh, 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 exhibition has been, uh, is, is on, online at the Grolier Club's website. Uh, which, I think it's grolierclub.org, but you can just find it by Googling it. I've also had a panel of uh, very uh, of magazine scholars uh, to help me out, and I've also uh, plugged into some other very important people. For instance, I've developed a very good relationship with the American Antiquarian Society, which, if if none of you are familiar with it, they're in they're in Worcester, Massachusetts. They've been there since 1810, and um, uh, they have the largest repository of, of of newspapers and periodicals before 1876. American ones in the world. Uh, that includes the Library of Congress. Um, so uh, their, their archivist, who would uh, love to speak to you because uh, he is a newspaper historian as well, and he's put together an incredible mass of, um, of undocumented mag uh, newspapers. His name is Vincent Golden. Uh, his, his email address is vgolden at mwa.org. So my my take on this whole uh, uh, idea is that uh, I've, I, what I've been telling reporters and people for many years, for a long time now, is that magazines were the analog internet before there was a digital internet, and we're always in the we're in the process right now of transitioning to a to a digital internet. Uh, I've always people are always asking me what the future of magazines are. Well, it's always going to be. A certain percentage of people who want the feel of paper in their hands, uh, they're not dead, but they've changed in focus considerably. The days of the multi-million circulation magazine, like the Saturday Evening Post or Collier's or Life or Look are over. Uh, but we still have tremendous amount of specialty magazines. And some of the old standard magazines from way back, like Harper's, which started in 1850, and Atlantic, which started in 1857, are still going strong and, and making their mark. A lot of magazines these days are making their mark in investigative journalism. Nonetheless, I have an immense archive. My, my focus is a little bit different than Jim's. Jim, Jim collects massive amounts of everything. Um, I have limited space where I am. I, my, 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 my collection includes seven, my database includes 7,000 titles, 83,000 individual issues of magazines. Jim, uh, but, uh, but mine is, uh, is really uh, focused on first issues of magazines, uh, important literary appearances, and important cultural phenomena as well. Uh, so you guys have my email. Uh, 
you have, uh, and I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions through my email. I'd love to meet. Uh, I'm actually looking for a European venue for the for the for the for the show. If you look at it and you like it, we we'll, we might be able to work something out. I'm 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 trying to get one in California as well because the show has been immensely popular. It ends on April 24th. If anybody happens to be in the New York City area, I would invite you to go to uh, the Grolier Club, which is uh, at 60th Street and Park Avenue in New York City. Uh, we can accommodate uh, in the days of uh, social distancing of uh, uh, small groups if you sign up. Um, I don't know what else basically to tell you um, uh, other than the fact that I'm, I'm, uh, magazines are an incredible repository. A day does not go by that I don't find information that I didn't know before. Um, unlike stamps where you can go to the Scott catalog or coins where you can go to the Red Book, magazines are completely uncatalogued. So um, there are things that turn up every day that are unknown. And obviously, there, there's very little in the way of digital documentation. Uh, some of the earlier magazines have been done that. Uh, have, Hathi Trust has done some. But for the most part, uh, they're completely uncatalogued and completely undocumented and of great importance. Uh, every day, something very important comes up. And um, I'm, I'm anxious to be able to partner with people to, to, uh, to, to make magazines, as Jim said, uh, give them their due. And they're, they're quite important, have been important. And, and will continue to be important in a, in a specialized way. But the history of magazines is, 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 very, is very significant and um, has a lot to add to the American popular culture and to the world's popular culture and to the history in general. So I thank you for uh, this, uh, uh, this time, and I'll bring it back to Jim. Let me turn it over to James in London. He has an, am an amazing collection, just like Stephen, and we're so lucky to have him here for you all to meet. And hope that we can spawn some collaborations. James? Thank you. Look, I, I, I must say, great to connect with everyone here. And Stephen, you know, I look forward to possibly partnering with you and our like-minded kindred spirits is great. And Ben as well. Ben Lee is phenomenal. So thank you for having me. I wonder if I can, don't worry, I can share some stuff very quickly. I know everyone's pushed for time, so I'm going to be quick. Um, I, again, I just completely echo and reinforce what Stephen said about magazines, their importance, the zeitgeist. I often say the same thing. Before the internet was created, magazines were the internet. Showing my age, when I was in the, um, I, one of my first jobs was working as a script writer for MTV Europe. Now, before the internet, your main source of getting your information was from magazine. My job was a script writer. I had to write little bits and pieces for presenters to talk about on air. It was, it was the best source was magazines. You couldn't go online. It didn't exist. It wasn't there. You had these incredible magazines. So if it was a Prince weekend on MTV and you had to find loads of information on Prince, you go to a great Rolling Stone magazine, go through that little um, article on Prince, the four pages about Prince and take out little nuggets. But anyway, if I can, hopefully, if I can share my screen, I have a very, very short two minute video that will distill exactly what I'm doing. I can show you one other thing and then, you know, what it is, is question and answers. So. James Hyman is a super fan, a super fan of magazines, that is. Hi Mag is a record-breakingly huge collection of magazines, pamphlets, brochures and zines that James has picked up over the years. It comprises over 5,000 titles and a mammoth 150,000 individual issues. Hi Mag is one of those world's best kept secrets. Help us liberate this amazing, invaluable content and make it accessible for everyone. It's enormous. There has never been a more important time. The time is now to preserve history digitally. And how better to do that with the world's largest collection of magazines, Hi Mag. Hi Mag to me is like a dream world. The most extraordinary treasure trove. The breadth of the collection was what I was most inspired by. Hi Mag is an invaluable source for curators, for students, for researchers. A wonderland of magazines and rows and rows that you cannot even comprehend. Magazine heaven. In order to understand what James and the team are doing, you have to understand the value of magazines above and beyond their contemporary purpose. Sick. You don't just read the content, you also read the context. Every single magazine is a crystallized moment in time. And that's why it's really important that magazines be preserved and digitized by HiMag so that future generations can read that content and that context at the same time. That's what James and the team can provide. 
Digitizing HiMag is an incredible thing because it suddenly takes this incredible archive and turns it into a resource. Being able to search this archive using modern day tools would be a game changer. To have that material available internationally to researchers would be incredible. Not digitizing them would be like losing the Library of Alexandria all over again. I just want to quickly show you, very quickly, um, kind of taking on almost what Ben was showing with his remarkable presentation on, oh, I mean, how I'd love to apply his tools to what I'm trying to do. I mean, we're doing slowly but surely uh, digitizing, going direct to lots of publishers um, and getting agreements with these publishers to digitize. And to give you just a little example of, you know, to show you a few things about the power of the rich content, you all know that if you you know, aggregate all these magazines together. I mean, I'm going to put in, for example, fashion model Kate Moss, because with that we get a lot of fashion students. Can you all see my screen here? Yeah? Yes. Everyone can see, right? So here you go, loads of articles, yeah. pictures, images, obvious filters. You could filter by covers. So you're just saying, I just want to see Kate Moss in Vogue from 1994 to 1996. You could go even deeper and say her hairstylist, who is Sam McKnight, anything that Sam McKnight styled Kate Moss, colour it, just in blue. I'll give you an easy <laughs> David Bowie, for example, where I think this content, look, again, OCR picks up everything with David Bowie, but where I think this becomes such an interesting, something in the example like this. So... Here's an item that Bowie wore. No one would really know, unless you're an expert, that that's a Bowie-related context. And I think the power of this is so exciting when everything is tagged because it gives you such, you know, you, you could search by photographer, you search by stylist, you search by, yeah, again, as I say, you know, imagine you're a student and you're doing your project on, it, um, you know, outfits Bowie wore in the 90s. Or, again, I mean, if I just went back and added, I don't know, smoking here. Okay, the OCR, look, it picks up the words, David Bowie and smoking, of course, OCR is almost a given these days, but look, there you get the images. So give me the first picture that, you know, of David Bowie smoking in, I don't know, Tatler magazine. Um, and final example, just to kind of ram the point home, you know, the other day we had somebody from the Face magazine, which is a fantastic fashion Bible magazine that was from the 80s to 2004 and then got revived recently. And he asked us, you know, he was saying, look, this is what he would search. Beastie Boys and Adidas. And there you go, an obscure magazine called Mass Appeal. But look how rich this is. Okay, so you've got Adidas, you've got Beastie Boys. But you have so much information here. Brands of shoes, that, you know, this. Look at the detail, just off one result. So, yeah, that kind of really excites me about the potential and then, if I've still got it here, just very quickly, a couple of slides I, I quickly was going to give to Jim. So this is kind of us, you know, one of our taglines is Spotify for magazines. But um, Some stats, we've got 150 magazines growing through donations all the time. It's a blessing and a curse, really, because the more magazines I accept, I've got to pay the storage on them, which is painful um, when, you know, you're really struggling for money. Now, again, we fill a lot of gaps. That's just some testimonials. I'll whiz through. I don't have the slide, unfortunately. Yeah, but one of them here. So if you Google this lady, Edda Tassiemka, she was known as the human Google. In fact, I could probably quickly show you her on uh, here very quickly. A remarkable lady, and she bequeathed her whole archive. She used to have a business of basically press cuttings where you would ask her, you wanted a file on anyone, anything, any topic, whether it's a country, a person, an item, a trend. And she, you can see here, she had basically files on anyone and everything. Now I've got that. And for that, again, to be digitized is so, so, so priceless. And in my opinion, you know, critical. So um, I will stop rambling because I'm conscious of time and I will stop sharing if I if I'm there and maybe back to normality. Is that right? Are we all back on screens? Yeah. So I just yeah. want to kind of end to thank everyone.
to, um, you know, thank you to Jim um, and Tim Lynn as well, as well to let me let just, you know, be part of this and use I and to meet Stephen and Ben. And I just, my passion is, I've been doing this for, you know, 40 plus years and all like my dream is just to see this um, available for future generations. You know, there was another thing, there's a great story of a lady who, she just digitized the New York Post for, and again, the trend forecasting and what came out of that, you should, you should, uh, I should type that in there, but it's that rich content, what comes out of it, what, what, and, you know, I just want that to, you know, please God be available to all future generations, researchers, journalists, broadcasters, documentary makers, fashion students, it's locked, it's locked, it needs to be unlocked, this stuff needs to be available, it's, you know, as Jim said in, in his sort of introductory here, this, this, you know, it's been done pretty much from newspapers, but magazines are such, you know, they are still one of the most powerful mediums out there. They're surviving physically. Some of these magazines still are doing incredibly well weekly, but aggregating all that and letting it be a rich resource, you know, I've said it and, that, and that's how I'll end. Super, super. Thank you so much, James. Uh, it, the, the couple of URLs that we shared, um, we have that bullet list uh, of kind of supplementary materials. We'll add um, our slides, uh, PDF of our slides in there so that you can, um, but also uh, the Press OO article that I wrote to be the technical talk uh, for this uh, uh, conference to share there is really something I hope uh, attendees get a chance to take a look at because it, th this is really our passion is, uh, you know, to contribute and scientists to uh, bring you know, a, a whole issue approach to complex document structure layout recognition. So thank you uh, to our presenters. Thank you to the exactly. conference organizers and to the community. Just it's started. it's just exciting to be a part of it. Thank you. And let me turn it back over to Sally. Jim, uh, Tim Lynn, Stephen, James, thank you very much for this fascinating di deep dive into the world of magazines. It was wonderful to hear all of the technical standards, uh, CDOC CRM, FRB, FRBR OO, Press OO that were behind it, the Amica exhibition and uh, James's uh, excellent search engine to divide in there and I think that has really opened up our eyes to um, the, the the sort of yeah the zeitgeist the um, the insight into contemporary popular culture that is possible um, moving beyond uh, newspapers and into magazines so thank you very much for sharing that with us today.